Hi there, I'm Heather Mazie, Clinical Associate with the Modern Intimacy Team, and today I'm gonna to talk about LAT, or Living Apart Together. This is a new trend over the last 10 years or so of folks who are bucking the trend of living under one roof and sharing a bed. Why, you might ask? Well, the truth is that history really lent itself to cohabitation due to societal norms and gender roles. But today, a growing population of people are choosing to live apart together. This is generally a monogamous intimate partnership between unmarried individuals who live in separate homes but identify as a committed couple. Um, some married folks are represented as well. And this break from traditional cohabitation uh, while on the rise is still widely misunderstood and stigmatized as marriage is really universally promoted as superior. So LAT might be a choice, uh, but more commonly it's a result of a myriad of relational functionalities from finances, education, kids, fear of lost autonomy, ease for relationship salute, dissolution, and the list goes on. So there's no longer one preference for relationships. How nice. And LAT is helping transform norms around living situations. So although it's best to definitely have both parties engaged uh, in the discussion around arrangements, uh, research is finding differences between uh, older adults and younger adults who choose the LAT lifestyle. Older adults might be choosing this because of a desire not to caretake. They might want to protect their autonomy and independence in later life, or maybe there's just a general disinterest in cohabitation after divorce. Younger folks are really finding themselves in LAT as a result of circumstance, not wanting to give up a great apartment, uh, maybe the job market, educational pursuits, and financial constraints. LAT is really not seen as an opposition to marriage or cohabitation. People are still seeking healthy intimacy, just not in the way that we have come to expect. Uh, LAT relationships are hard to distinguish between when they start and when people are just living apart. Unlike having a move-in date, LAT um, is undefined in that regard. Some older folks are having a challenging time coming out about this type of relationship, uh, fearing reprisal from older adult children. And this trend might continue to grow among younger adults, particularly with women who want to avoid traditional domesticity and with more women who have the economic privilege of living alone. Um, if you're interested in learning more or kind of discussing this with a partner, a couples therapist can definitely help uh, ease into these conversations. Research is really uh, burgeoning about best practices, but nothing really exists. The methodology is left up to the partnership, but some examples include having two homes, living on separate floors, two bedrooms in one home, living a block away, or living in different states part-time. Uh, for some, it's kind of this idea of being together and being able to visit the other when they deem appropriate. And recognizing that this family form is not available to everyone, um, cohabitation may be necessary for, versus desired for some couples who need to pool their resources. It's important for couples to tell their story of LET in order for this form to reach societal normalcy and acceptance. Um, some people are still hiding this aspect of the relationship in order to avoid unnecessary questioning and perhaps some shame. Um, for some families, there is an expectation of cohabitation that exists as part of the marriage trajectory, kind of believing it as a trial period before a wedding. Time and empathy um, can hopefully render this trend mainstream, much like the acceptance of divorce over the years. There are so many reasons for choosing an LAT relationship, but the satisfaction is really couple dependent. Um, for some women, it might be a strategic undoing of uh, gender norms and attempt to resist patriarchal structures. Uh, by living apart together, no one finds themselves the designated house person. And today, women find themselves with a lot more independence and financial security. Uh, it might be a way to reduce disputes. No one is sleeping on the couch when you don't share a bed. Many couples are reporting an increase in novelty and excitement, uh, keeping the treasured parts of coupledom, but avoiding the loss of individualism. 
Long distance couples report more passion in the relationship. Um, they're having to work a little bit harder to see each other and this can keep things spicy. Keeping one's preferred way of living, including privacy standards, is a bonus, particularly for people with an avoidant attachment style. And the prospect of long-term dating with the intention to move in can be overwhelming for some. There's also been a rise in polyamory and open relationships that are making LAT more attractive, but simultaneously risking secrecy. Research consistently highlights that the perception of concealment is correlated with relationship dissatisfaction. We know that relationships can be full of variety and options, but sharing your heart doesn't always mean you have to share your home. Everyone needs time alone to connect and just do your own thing. Um, and living together is often a bold act of commitment and can be viewed as a relationship investment. So LAT is allowing another choice. It avoids the obligatory commitment to a deeper relationship simply due to proximity. There's no death, uh, till death do us part in different apartments. So whether an LIT relationship is right for you is definitely a worthy exploration. Um, and I've got a few questions for you to get you to start thinking. Um, just remember that those who engage in thoughtful decision making around relationships report more dedication, higher satisfaction, less infidelity. So do not make this decision by yourself. So one question to consider is really, are you rigid in your lifestyle? Does the toilet paper have to be folded a certain way? Do you really care about your alone time? Um, these are things that you want to pay attention to. Also, how many people have you cohabitated with in the past? How did it go? How did it end? It can be easier to break up when you don't feel stuck and there's no shared stuff. Are you quick to jump from relationship to relationship? Artificially increasing commitment through living together can be problematic. What are your current budget and financial goals? LAT may be a cost saver, but does that mean it's right for you? And then what are your relational norms or expectations? Can you move past these? If you believe in marriage, you want to get married. If you believe in living with your partner and you want to live with your partner, do that. Do you, because there is no right or wrong way. You get to decide how your relationship goes. Remember, you can also change your mind. Uh, social pressure to live with a partner still exists and currently homes are really set up in this fashion. It may be harder to find somebody who wants an LAT relationship, but if you prioritize communication and exploration with your current or future partner, the possibility exists. So whatever you do, live together, live apart or live apart together, consider of the future of your relationship together if you want one. Good luck.